Hi there. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how to use the Flutter Stepper widget in the latest version of Flutter, which is 2.60. This comes with a few slight changes to the Stepper widget, namely the introduction of the controls details. As always, you can find the text version of this video down at developer.school. So here we're starting with a brand new Flutter project. I've gone ahead and created an address form. It simply has a text form field three times with a street, city, and postcode. We also have a card form, which emulates a card input. And finally, an overview page. That might say something like, thank you for your order. I've gone ahead then on main.dart, and I've added the checkout page to be the home of the material app. At the time this video is being recorded, you'll also need to be on the latest version of Flutter. So move over to Flutter, Channel, Master, and then after that, type Flutter Upgrade, and you'll be ready to go. So let's move back to the checkout page. Inside of here, we currently have nothing for the body of this scaffold. Let's add one, and we'll call it Stepper. The Stepper is a widget that comes from the Material Library, and it requires some steps. Let's provide it some steps by adding a Steps, and we'll give it the following items inside of the array, where each one is a step with the title initially of text address and the content equal to the widget that you want to appear inside of this step. So for us, that'll be the address form. Next, let's also add another step with the title of text card details and the content of the card form. And finally, Let's add a step with the title of overview and we'll make the content of this equal to overview. Let's close this array and we can make this all const. And once we save the file, you should see that we now have a stepper that we can't currently click continue or cancel on. But we can see that we have the first form at least, and that's the address form, and the titles for the other two steps. That's because the stepper itself doesn't come through with any inherent step through functionality. We have to provide the current step to the stepper. Inside of our checkout page state, we'll make an int where the current step is equal to zero. We can then pass that to our stepper by providing it the current step is equal to the underscore current step. My editor's gone ahead and made that final, but we will be removing the final from that in a second. So let's now make a new function called void on step continue. And this will be called any time we click the continue button on the stepper. For this, we'll go ahead and pull out the steps from the stepper. We'll add them above the current step. So we'll say const underscore steps equals, and we'll pass the value in. We'll also make this static. And we'll provide these back to the steps. And the reason we do that is because of inside of on step continue, we need to check to see whether we're at the final step. So we'll say if underscore current step is less than underscore steps dot length minus one. That's essentially saying here, if we're not at the final step, then we want to set the state where the current step is equal one. So let's now remove final from current step. And here's where we can do something if we want to perform an action where we're at the final step inside of our app. So we could say else. And for now, we'll just set the current state where the current step is equal zero. I'll just put us back to the start of the stepper whenever we press continue at the end. Let's go ahead now on the stepper itself and add the on step continue to the stepper. You'll notice now that the blue button is clickable. So we can say continue. That will then put us to the second step. If we hit it once more, we'll be at the overview step. And if we select continue for the last time, it'll take us back to address. Instead of simply just putting the user to the next step, what you're most likely going to want to do here is perform some validation. So inside of this step here, we'll validate and we'll determine whether the user can actually move forward and if they can, then of course, we'll use 
set state where we increase that value over the current step. Let's write a similar function now that allows us to go back. So we'll say void on step cancel. And this time we want to check to see whether if the current step is greater than zero, if it is, then we want to say current step minus minus. Don't forget to add that into set state. That will cause a rebuild for our widget. We can then add the on step cancel into the step up. We can now press the cancel button. And if we're on step one, it won't do anything. But if we press continue and then cancel, it'll take us back to step one. So if we review where we're at so far, we now have a stepper where we can tap. The final thing I'd like to do here is to create a void on step tapped. And that provides us with the int index of the step that was tapped. And here we'll just set the current step equal to that index. We can then add that to the stepper by saying on step tapped. And we can pass the function of on step tapped. If we save that, we can now select a step and it will take us to that exact step that we clicked. So in review, we now have a stepper where we can tap on the step to move to that step. We can press the continue button to move forward. We can press the cancel button to move backwards. And if we're on the final page, the continue button will send us back to the front. And if we're on the first page, the cancel button won't do anything. Let's now investigate how we can make a customized controls for this stepper. So maybe this one, instead of saying continue, it might want to say next. Instead of cancel, maybe you want it to say back. That's done by providing a widget return type that takes a function which has build context, context, and controls details, which we're going to call controls details. And in here, I'm going to return a padding, and that padding will simply be edge insets dot symmetric. We'll add a vertical of 16. Then as a child, we'll add a row with the children. Well, firstly, an elevated button. And for the unpressed, we want to first remove const from padding because this is no longer a globally constant widget inside of this function. And on the unpressed, we want to say controls details dot on step continue. We want to give this the child of the text that says next. That'll now give us a next button. Perhaps also then we want to hide the back button if we're on the first step. So it would only make sense that if you can't go back, let's not show that to the user. So we'll add an if statement here that says if the current step is not zero, then let's show a new button. This time I'm going to make it instead of elevated, we'll say text. And for that text button, we'll give it the on pressed of the controls details dot on step cancel with the style equal to text style color colors dot gray. So this will give us a gray button that says back, but it won't appear for that first step. Let's scroll down now. And of course we do need to give this an actual name. So we'll call this instead of saying the word function, we'll call this controls builder. And we'll then add the controls builder to the stepper just like that. So you'll notice when we add the controls builder, it will go ahead and it will change. It will no longer say continue. Instead, it will say next and it will say back. You can select them just like we could before, but the back button won't appear on that first step. So prior to the latest version of Flutter, when we use the controls builder, you would instead of receiving a controls details, would receive a build context, a on step continue, and an on step cancel. So just like we've used here with controls details dot, just imagine that it looked like that instead. And instead of having the controls details, we have an on step cancel, then an on step continue. So that's how we customize the controls of a particular stepper. Next up, we're going to look at how to change the active and completed state of a step. So right now you can see we just have the one, two, and three. But we also, on a step itself, if we scroll back up to where we've added it, can add something called a state. So we have a variety of ones. So it's a step state dot. We can see we have either complete, disabled, editing, error, or indexed. 
The default state for this is the step state dot indexed. But if we click through into a few of them, for example, editing, you can now see that it turns into this pen icon. So we'll make now a step state. We'll call it step state. That will return us a particular step state. In here, we'll take in a step and we'll ask inside of it if the current step is greater than the step we've passed in then we want to return the step state dot complete. Otherwise we'll return step state dot editing. So now on each one of the steps, we can go through and we can say underscore step state. This time we'll say zero. Now I'm now gonna remove the constant and static from the steps and turn this into a function. So that function will return this list of steps and for each one of the steps we'll go ahead and add a step state which is equal to the index of that step so this will be 0 1 and 2 finally let's go ahead and add an is active to the step that's done by saying underscore current step and checking to see whether that is equal to the index of that step so here it will be 0 in the next step it will be 1 and finally it will be two. Let's now move to on step continue and make steps a function as well as the build method. And when we save the file, you should be able to see that this is the active step and we're currently editing this one. When we move forward, it is then a check mark. Then when we move to the next step, it becomes the active step. And when we press next, the same thing happens. So this of course is just one way of changing the step state. You can do a variety of different things like we've seen. You can also show error messages too. And of course that would be by changing the step state itself to be a step state dot error. So you'll notice that this also changes the title color of the step. I'm gonna put that back now to be our step state of two. So a lot of this of course is gonna depend on the custom logic of your form state. And one final thing to look at is the aspect that a stepper can also be horizontal and vertical. So we'll scroll down back to the stepper that we had before and inside of the stepper, we'll give that a type of stepper state dot horizontal. When we do that, you'll notice that the stepper is now horizontal. We can still click it like we can before and depending on the type of application that you're trying to make, maybe the horizontal makes more sense than the vertical or vice versa. So in review for this video, you created a stepper widget. You looked at how to add the on step tap to cancel and continue methods. You also looked how to modify the stepper controls, the step state, and of course, change whether it's vertical or horizontal. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and let me know what you'd like to see in the comments section below. Until next time, 